morning everyone and welcome to K Chapel Sunday School adult class this morning and um, we are just so privileged to do this lesson today because it's a perfect lesson for a person in music ministry um, and have not had the opportunities to be here every Sunday as we would like because of the pandemic. So I counted a privilege to be able to do this lesson to praise and talk about praise and worship this morning. So I welcome you to the class. I am Barbara Hadnot and I'm one of the teachers for class 14 and we will begin with prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today and we just welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit and that we will do what you would have us to do this morning in presenting this lesson. Bless the hearing of your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So our lesson today is still in the unit of call to praise God. And the title of the lesson is Ball of Confusion. Ball of Confusion. Our devotional reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 17 through 21. The background scripture is Psalms 9, Ecclesiastes 3, 16 through 22. Our print passage comes from Psalms number 9, verses 1 through 12. We will read both versions of the key verse, which is Psalms number 9, verse 8. Starting with the King James. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He minister judgment to the people in uprightness. In the NIV version, he rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. Our lesson objectives. We have three, contrast God's justice with humanity's injustice. And we will see that in the second outline. Value how God listens and responds to our needs. We'll see that in the third outline. Practice God's justice in difficult situations. We will apply that in our daily lives, in our times of struggles, we can, can apply that. As I said, the title of the lesson is Ball of Confusion. On, and people say that movies and music mirrors what's going on in the world today or it can be uh, they can be snapshots of what's to come so on May 7th in 1970 the Temptations released a single called Ball of Confusion that's what the world is today that's what the world is today a ball of confusion and it's been a ball of confusion really since man's fall from grace so in 1970 the temptations talked about when people of color move in the white people move out just because of the color of your skin it talked about children growing up too soon being on drugs um, it talked about air pollution 
and all sorts of things, uh, money, finances, violence, all of that was talked about in that song. And they ended up saying, round and around and around we go, where the world's headed, nobody knows, because it's a ball of confusion. We know who the author of confusion is, and we know who the father of lies is. It's Satan himself. And so in the 70s, we see um, Vietnam War, we see Watergate, we see disco uh, music with um, the psychedelic lights, psychedelic clothing, all these things fueling the drug situation. So on every hand, you have this ball of confusion, which is really like a boulder. Um, you have holes in a boulder where you can fall through and you end up at a dark place. You have the rock is so smooth that you'll fall off of it like a cliff. Or you can't scale the wall, you can't really climb it because it's so steep. It's got jagged edges and points where you can't grab a hole because um, when you fall, you, they could scrape you or you could hurt yourself. So this ball is not only a ball of confusion, it's a ball that really could hurt you for life. There's no light in this ball. So if we move back in time, travel back in time to our lesson text, we see that the world was in a ball of confusion at that time. Um, Psalms 9 celebrates God's goodness and help in the face of an enemy. And David had a lot of enemies. He was a good shepherd. He was a great warrior. He was a mighty king. So you know, he had a lot of enemies along the way. So Psalms, Psalms 9 originally was joined with Psalms 10. Psalms 9 was more uh, national. It's a national psalm. And Psalms 10 is more personal. And so Psalm 10, um, Psalms 9 is where scholars say that David was even thinking as far back as his time with Goliath, his victory over Goliath. So this brings us to our analysis of the text. And our first outline is praise God for his justice. And these will in, this will include the verses uh, 1 through 4 in Psalms 9. And we'll read from the King James Version starting with verse 1. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O Most High. When my enemy are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou has maintained my right and my cause. Thou satest in the throne judging right. So here, the psalmist David, we can see him leading praise and worship, leading the congregation. And he starts with a personal testimony. So in praise and worship, 
nothing is more effective than your praise being personalized, especially from the worship leader. Musicians, choirs, praise teams, soloists, directors, and other leaders in worship serve an important role. The goal is to lead the congregation to a personal encounter with God because ultimately what we want to have is praise and worship that's real, that's authentic, that's genuine. And it's going to be hard to do that if each person does not have that personal connection, that connection with the Holy Spirit, uh, and think about their own experiences with God. So in this praise, David starts with the declaration. He says, I will. The psalmist gives wholehearted thanks to God. And he's really not talking to a particular person in the congregation. He's not as a group nor as an individual. He says, I speak of the wonderful things God has done. So he's telling his own personal testimony. He's reflecting on the Lord's work on his behalf. And um, so when a person is giving their testimony as a worship leader, then the congregation will begin to think about their own personal experiences, what God has done in my life. And when that happens, the, the praise service is going to be a joyful one. And like David, we shouldn't think just because I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian, that God is going to fix everything. He's going to do it my way, what I want him to do at the time I want him to do it. David knew that this was not a personal vindication against his enemies. Um, he knew that this was divine vindication from God. And that's how we in our lives can wholeheartedly praise, sing praises to God the Most High. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. The cherubim and the seraphim cry, holy, 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 I sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. I sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. So now we see in our second outline, God, we praise God for his righteousness. Those verses will include five through eight. And I shall read from the King James. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thy enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them, but the Lord shall endure forever. He shall prepare his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world 
in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in righteousness. So in this Psalms, we can see where God's justice is nothing like humanity's injustice. We have injustice in the courtroom, in our criminal adjustment, a, a criminal justice system, um, in housing, uh, unemployment, um, in equal pay. We have someone pushing for equal pay in this state right now. In just about any situation you come up with in humanity, injustice is being done. But as the psalmist share his love for the Lord, encouraging others to worship God, offering him additional praise, God rebuked the unbelieving heathen, destroyed the wicked, and removed their name forever. God is omnipotent, and David knew this. We know this. He knows all things. So he could have just uprooted David's enemies, displaced them, uh, and he can do the same thing with us, or he can absolutely eliminate any issue, problem, or trouble that we may have in our life. When God takes our case, he handles it, and he, saw, he resolves it. So it's befitting, and it's appropriate, and it's right for us to praise God for the victories in our lives. And this Psalms is a message of hope and comfort to the world for those who are facing enemies, those who are treated unjustly, um, those who are hurting. We know that God never fails. Whatever he does, he's not going to fail at it. So that's why in our lives, we can praise God. The first time Jesus came to this world, they crowned him with thorns. But the next time he comes, we crown him with praise. Jesus, we crown you with praise. Jesus, we crown you with praise. We love and adore you. Bow down before you. Jesus, we crown you with praise. So our third outline, we praise God for his memory. Those verses are verses 9 through 12. And again, we read the King James Version. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. In this part of the praise, for one thing, there are a lot of songs you can put out, pull out of this 
part. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. We did a song in the cantata once, those who know your name put their trust in thee. And there are so many, so many praises in this psalm. And like the psalmist, we can be grateful that God does more than just judge the wicked. If he would just fix our problems, take care of the enemy, that would be enough. All of us would say that's enough. That's more than we deserve. But our God covers us. He protects us from being oppressed by the enemy. When we are oppressed, mistreated, God is our shelter. A lot of times when we have problems that come up, our first thing to do is go talk to someone else. That's our first line of defense. But we should always, in prayer, go to God and talk to Him about our problems. Um, because in this section, really David is giving additional reasons for us to praise. But we really don't need additional reasons to, to um, praise God because just knowing who he is and praising him for who he is is enough. So more than praising God, David also declared how good God was to him, to the nations. So we should do the same thing. We should praise God on Facebook through our posts. We have um, free conference calls, prayer lines, or Bible studies where we can declare what God has done for us. Um, there are Zoom. There are so many ways that we can declare to others what God has done for us. Because this section of the scripture shows us that God hears us, he listens to us, he remembers us, he will never forget us. God is immutable. He never changes, he never runs out of anything. And so while the world is in a ball of confusion, we stand on the solid rock of Jesus. That ball is not a ball of confusion. That rock is solid. And there are crevices in that rock, so if you need to, you can plant your foot. You can hold on. Um, put your foot in one of those footholds in the crevices. We can reach up and grab a place, the nooks and crannies that are in the rock. We can grab a hold to that. There are ledges like arms on this rock where we can stand. We can stand on solid ground. This rock is not so steep and so smooth that we can't climb it. We, there are all sorts of places we can actually hide ourselves in the rock of Jesus. And we can rejoice that he rules forever with justice and in righteousness in our lives. So the challenge is for us to increase our praise time in our personal life, and then we can declare God more and share with others what he has done for us in our public life. So. We will conclude and close the lesson with praise. We give you praise. So if you know this song by Dottie People, you can close out with us in praise. And then we will do a prayer of praise. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord, for all you've done. We give you all 
the praise we lift our hand to you lord for your mercy and your grace we give you praise lord we give you praise lord we give you praise Father God, we praise you for all you've done in our lives. We praise you for all you are going to do. We praise you for your holiness. We praise you for your love. We praise you for being omnipotent. We praise you for being omnipresent. We praise you for never changing in our lives. We just ask for more opportunities to praise and declare you in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord, for all you've done. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. that tonight. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. one thing God has done for you and I want you to just say thank you. Thank you. Just one thing. I want to thank you. Lord. He woke you up early. 